Hi everybody, Dr. Sean again. I hope you had a wonderful experience. I want to take a few minutes and go through the post-op instructions, which are very important. We will be giving you a copy of all the post-op instructions, and please go through them many times because it's based on a feedback of over 2,000 patients. So, you just completed the procedure. So, what's next? The night of the procedure is very important. You got few medications. One, they're antibiotics, right? And for most people, you have Keflex. And you're supposed to take it one tablet twice a day. You've already taken them this morning, so I would like you to take them again tonight at 8 p.m. when you get home. Another medication is called prednisone, is a steroid, and you will start taking it tomorrow morning with food for the next few days. It's very sour tasting. You may have also gotten um, a pain medication, codeine, and I'm going to show you how to take it later on. Important things. Just take it easy tonight, right? Really take it. Don't have any plans to go anywhere else. Just go home, eat very well, drink plenty of uh, fluids. The most important thing is that I will be giving you a special spray bottle. In that bottle, there is a solution called lactated ringers. Lactated ringers is basically your own blood without actual blood cells. So it has sodium, potassium, electrolytes, energy for your graphs. So just remember, it will take your graphs three days to connect with the blood vessels. For those three days, you have to provide it with artificial nutrients so it will survive. So I'm going to give you this spray bottle and you will spray it continuously every 10 minutes. So 10 sprays every 10 minutes until you go to bed. And if there's any spots that your blood clots, you spray it more. As long as you don't put it on the shooting mode, it's on the spray mode, there's no problem. You don't want to dab the hair, you don't want to touch it, let the water basically, let the bandage that's around the, your, uh, your forehead to capture the water. If you like, you would just take a napkin and put it on your forehead and spray as well. The important thing is spray every 10 minutes until you go to bed. Also, I would like you to get up at the 2 o'clock and 4 o'clock in the morning, right? so set up your alarm clock and really spray it very well. What we find is that the spray keeps it very, very clean and really minimizes the downtime. Because if you have blood clots, right, it's very tough to remove them and it will actually inhibit or prevent you going to work earlier. So take the spray very seriously, especially the night of the procedure. Now you're gonna continue spraying, right, on day two and day three as well. So the night of the procedure every 10 minutes, the next day every 20 minutes, and the following day after that every 30 minutes. Now I would like you to take it very easy. So if you have to bend down to tie or untie your shoe, I would like you to squat. So you're keeping basically your head in a straight position. So I would not like you to look downwards because there's really nothing holding any of your graphs except for the tissue around it. So if you make sudden moves, you know, there's a chance that your grafts may come out. If you touch your scalp or you scratch them, there's a chance that your grafts may come out. So take it very easy. If you have to bend down, squat down, keeping your head elevated, I would like you to also sleep at a 45 degree angle. What does this mean? That means taking one or two pillows and put it behind your back. Or if you like, some people sleep on a recliner or a sofa. You will be leaving the office with the most like a blue hat like this and when you get home you could actually remove it so that you could spray it. But you will have a bandage that goes around your head and that will capture the water as you spray. For the FTV procedure, most people don't have much discomfort. So if you like, you could just take some ibuprofen or Tylenol. If you do have significant pain, you could take some codeine and that will actually relieve that discomfort. Bleeding is really, really rare. Oozing is okay. And again, the thing you need to watch out for is maybe one of the holes, which happens really, really rarely, may have a dis this blood vessel that may be pulsating bleeding. If that happens, 
what you do, you just said, you take a few books, you put a pillow cover over the book, and you put your head over it, and you apply pressure, and that will stop it. Now, I also like to just go through and tell you what's in the packet, what's in the goodie bag packet that you received. Well, there are a few hats like this, <clears throat> which is basically just a clean hat, your spray bottle, your medications, pillow covers, and for people that do the FUE, there's gauze that you add, and for those that do transplant in the front, there's also tape. So day two, you're gonna remove your bandage. You're gonna keep on spraying continuously every 20 minutes. You could do it over the sink, right? Or you could uh, basically take a towel and you hold it and spray it so the water is captured by the towel. But there's no need to touch the grafts. There's no need to rub them at all. So you keep on spraying the next day and the following day for 30 minutes and then you could stop spraying. For those that have a hair transplant right at the hairline, you notice you have a tape on your forehead. This will prevent and minimize the swelling from draining underneath your eyes. So, one of the things I would like you to do is to take your finger pads, forefinger, you put it in the middle of your forehead and you push the swelling to the side, over the tape. Why? Because the lymph nodes along the edges that will reabsorb the fluid but there are no left nodes here, so the fluid goes underneath your eyes. So you do this about a few times an hour. It's a very important. If you have to go somewhere and you have to remove the tape, make sure you keep on doing that. Very key. So you need to have the tape on for four days and four nights, and the next day counts as day number one. So if you did the procedure on a Monday, you need to have the tape on for Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday night, so by Saturday morning, right, you don't need to put the tape anymore. I also like you to ice the forehead as well. So you take ice, five minutes, you go back and forth on the tape, and you do it three times a day for the following day after the procedure and the next day. You want to wait at least 24 to 48 hours before you wash your grafts. Now within that time period, it's really not necessary because you're spraying it with a sterile solution. So after 48 hours, you just take a cup, you put baby shampoo in it and with some lukewarm water so it's not too hot, it's not too cold, and you shake it so it's foamy and you rinse it and then you rinse clean water over it and really that's your shampoo. In. And that's how you're going to shampoo for the next few weeks, right? Every day or every other day. And I only want Johnson & Johnson's baby shampoo for the first month. After one month, after the hair falls out, you could use your ordinary regular shampoo. But we have used Johnson & Johnson's baby shampoo in millions of patients and we know it's safe. So, by day 21, you take baby shampoo in your hand, gently lather it, and gently dab it, right? And then, you know, you could go under the need a shower, allow the water pressure to head it first, your hand first, and then head your grafts. And within the next one week, as the grafts fall out, you could become gently more and more aggressive. Now, let's say you have a significant degree of scabbing and crusting. Now, I should tell you, the more you spray the top of your scalp immediately after the procedure and for the following three days, the less scabbing you're going to have later on. But if you do have scabbing, by day 10, right, you could use a condition to get rid of the scabs. But first you need to speak with me, I have to give you the okay sign. So, the way you do it, you first take a cup of water, you rinse, then you take it, the baby shampoo, you shake it with some lukewarm water, you rinse, and you rinse it with clean water. And then you take conditioner in your hand, right, and then you gently lather it, and you apply the conditioner, and you let it sit between seven to nine minutes, sometimes even five minutes. So what does this do? The conditioner actually makes the scabs soft. And when it makes the scabs soft, right, you could then gently after the five to nine minutes, take your finger pads and very gently massage around the scab. So we're not picking at the scabs, we're not removing the scabs, we're very gently massaging them. And this will dislodge the scabs and then just rinse it. So if you do this for 
few days, two to three days, you're going to notice that all the scabs actually will come off from the grafts. And what you have is you see the hair stops. And then again, you go back and you become conservative in washing. Just rinse with clean water, rinse with shampoo, baby shampoo, and rinse it off until the grafts fall out. Then you could become aggressive. So now you had one month, and by now, you know, majority of your hair has actually fallen out, all the transplanted hairs. And uh, please be patient because it's going to take at least another few months for them to restart to grow. You know, these grafts go through a hibernating stage. So they really have to take their time. So please be patient. Now I would like to talk to you about how to take care of the donor area for those who have had the follicular unit extraction procedure done. So with the FUE, I have individually punched out one graft at a time. So by the time you leave the office, you that whole area is wrapped. And we have applied the ACO. So ACO is the growth factor. Right? We have mixed it with, uh, with bacitracin, it's very similar to Vaseline, but it also has antibiotic ointment in it. We have applied it basically to the donor area and we have wrapped it. For that night, please don't touch the wrapping. If you have any pain, you could take either the codeine or the ibuprofen. The next day, I would like to see you. Now, Sometimes with this spray, the wrapping just gets really loose and you know comes off. But if it doesn't, I could take it off in the office or I could take it off at home. Now for those doing two-day procedures, right? So if you're doing it on Monday and a Wednesday, on Tuesday, don't remove the wrapping. Just come in with the wrapping basically on Wednesday and we'll remove it. Unless it comes off by its own. So let's say it's the next day, the wrapping either came off, you removed it. How do you address the back? So I would like you to have um, the A cell and I would like you to also get Vaseline. Now the Vaseline, I would like you to get one of those one pounder top. I would like you to apply the A cell three times a day, 8 a.m., 12 p.m., 5 p.m. So how do you do it? Well, first I'd like you to wash the back of the scalp. So you take baby shampoo, you apply it, you rinse it, you clean it, you dry it. Then you take a cell, and I would like you to apply it to the little holes and actually rub it in. Now, the next day may be a bit tender, so you don't have to be aggressive, right? But in subsequent days, I want you to really rub it into the little holes because the way a cell works is that it goes into the holes and it minimizes the scar. So at eight o'clock in the morning, you apply a cell all over and you take the additional wraps and you wrap your scalp with them. Two hours later, you remove the wrap and you take a lot of Vaseline and you apply a lot of the Vaseline over the previous a cell and you wrap it again. And then at 12 o'clock you do A cell, two hours after you put Vaseline. At five o'clock you do uh, A cell, two hours after you do Vaseline. You continuously wrap them. I have done a lot of studies that have shown that this minimizes downtime from 14 days to seven days. So it's very important, please do it. So you wash the back of your scalp once a day with baby shampoo. You apply the ASO three times a day along with the Vaseline three times a day and you wrap it. So people ask me, do I have to remove the previous ASO before you apply Vaseline on the next ASO? No, just keep adding on. That is fine. And you just keep doing this until the back of the scalp heals. You want to make sure you actually finish the ASO. Each bottle should last about three to four days. So use a good significant amount of it. For people with curly hair, right, I would like you to do a special scalp squeeze exercise. So sometimes what happens is that these hair regrow back. So the hairs we have removed from the back of the scalp regrows back to the hole. And if the hole is covered, right, it's going to cause ingrown hair. So this is very common with curly hair, African Americans, Armenians. So very key. I would like you to do a special vertical and horizontal squeeze starting from day two uh, after the procedure. So how does that work? Well, you basically, you squeeze vertically and horizontally for about 
20 seconds twice a day for about one week after the procedure. For African Americans that have curly hair, you need to be doing it for two weeks. And these little details you discussed with me, but that's very important. It minimizes ingrown hair. Now, if you are prone to ingrown hairs, while right, you have a significant curly hair, please let me know because I will actually change your antibiotics to minimize ingrown hair. You have my personal cell phone number. I would like you to contact me the night of the procedure, you know, to make sure you're doing fine, you're doing well. Texting is also very well. I'm a very good texter that actually works very well. Shedding of your own natural hair is common. Shock loss happens is very common. So if you have slight shedding, it's okay. Very rarely people get significant shock loss where they lose a lot of hair. That is okay. Those hairs, you know, don't really have the bulb, you know, and they will regrow back. Within the first few months, as the hair starts to regrow, you're going to develop ingrown hair in the recipient area where the grafts will place. If it's just a few, it's okay. Don't pick at it and don't remove the grafts. You could apply some warm compressors on it. But if it's a few or more, you could call me, I could give you a topical solution that you apply on it and really increases the inflammation. Redness, typically redness takes about a few weeks to go away. Everybody's different, so please uh, keep me posted on how the redness uh, uh, goes. It will take about a uh, few months for the hairs to start regrowing. So please be patient. That's actually very important. The hairs will regrow back. There is a special protein shake and multivitamin developed by Dr. Larry Shapiro. His website is healthhair.com. I used to get a six month call, which is by six months people call me and saying, Dr. Sean, I have not seen any growth yet. But after I started using this special protein shake and multivitamin, I don't get it at all. So, because this special protein right, causes the hair to grow back faster. So what is so special about it? Well, there are two kinds of protein shakes, right? There is whey protein isolate and there is whey protein concentrate. Isolate just means that it has been chemically engineered to isolate for specific amino acids. And these are typically used by bodybuilders because those amino acids that have the highest concentrations, right, increase DHT, which increases your muscle mass, but causes hair loss and delays hair regrowth. So, in short, whey protein isolate is not good, the ones that you get at GNC. What is good is whey protein concentrate, which is pure whey protein, and these amino acids, this is how they come naturally. Dr. Shapiro has also added biotin as well as other different vitamins to it as well. So, you do one scoop of the protein shake in the morning, and one of the multivitamin at night. The protein shakes come in two flavors, chocolate or vanilla. I could just take a blender and add the, you know, the chocolate or the vanilla with milk or water and add some, you know, raspberries and blueberries to the vanilla and make a whole shake out of it. Or you could just drink them with the water or milk. Now, important thing is that you don't want to take the multivitamin and the shake together. You want to actually space them out by eight hours. So if you take the shake in the morning, you do the multivitamin at night, or vice versa. You could get the shake and multivitamin from Dr. Shapiro's website, which is healthpair.com. But unfortunately, the shipping and handling from Florida is really, really expensive. And I really don't like carrying any products in my office. Um, but uh, a lot of patients have complained about this issue, so you can get it from the office. So let's talk about itching. Itching either in the donor area or the recipient area in the front of the scalp. If you have itching in the donor area, you could very gently take your hands and just uh, dab on it. If it's really significant, you let me know, I'll give you a topical solution and you will get rid of it. For the top of the scalp, it's the same. So if it happens within the first one week, right, we just spray it and we'll get rid of the itch. You could gently dab it as well. If it's really significant, let me know, I'll give you a topical medication to get rid of it. You could also get hydrocortisone over the counter, which is hydrocortisone 1%, and apply it. But first, touch base with me. Some people have very thick grafts, and saunas can actually make the grafts balloon, and once they balloon, they can actually slip out of the hole. 
So I would like you to you know, not take any hot showers for the first three to four weeks and no saunas for the first one month after the procedure. So I understand accidents happen. Some people scratch their head in their sleeve. Some people bump their heads, a few grafts may come out. So what do you do? If it's within the first 24 to 48 hours, you take those grafts, you take a napkin, you moist it, you put the grafts over it, you put it in the refrigerator, and you call me, right? And we try to see you as soon as possible to put the grafts back in. It has happened about a few times, and uh, those grafts have done actually very, very well. A lot of patients uh, use hair fibers in their scalp. Um, you could use the hair fibers after one week. I've tested in many patients. It actually has worked pretty well. No infections um, with these cases that I've tried. Hair coloring. I would wait a whole month to color your hair. That's actually very important. Swimming, one month. Swimming in the pool, ocean, doesn't make a difference. One month. Jacuzzi, one month. You do treadmills after one week, heavy lifting after two weeks. Strenuous exercise, like running 20 miles, I would wait you know, until you heal fully. Any triathlons, any marathons, I would wait a good one to two months before you know, training for these um, or actually doing them. Um, if you have these uh, marathons or um, triathlons actually planned out, you should do the procedure after those runs. It's very important. Please don't get a sunburn um, for the first few months. I'd like you to wear a hat, um, and that's actually very important. So if you feel you're going to be out in the sun for more than 20 minutes, just wear a baseball hat. Please no alcohol for the first few days after the procedure, especially if you're taking Tylenol. Very key, you cannot mix Tylenol and alcohol together. The codeine medication that you have actually has Tylenol in it. So as long as you're taking it, no alcohol. If you take sleeping medications, you must let me know because sometimes there's interactions with the medications that you're going to be taking afterwards. Things that will prevent hair growth. Smoking. So really minimize it. Significant weight loss. Trauma to the graphs. And that includes, let's say, you go skiing, bungee jumping, things that are really traumatic. Please be careful not to bump your head anywhere. Your head is very sensitive, it's going to bleed a lot. Marijuana. People say, ask about marijuana all the time. It's really unclear whether marijuana will actually slow down hair growth. There are two case uh, studies um, that showed marijuana does slow hair growth. So just cut it down for the first one month. I'm sure a lot of my patients use it, but don't tell me about it, and they still have very good results. If you have any questions, you have my personal cell phone, you have my assistant's personal cell phone as well. I would love to see you for multiple follow-ups so I could customize a plan just for you. Thanks so much.